Hi, this is Zach Mir with the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Zach's Traders Cafe for Thursday the 16th of March. And starting off with the FTSE, where there's obviously been a bloodbath over the last week or so, the uh, shocker was the way that we broke below the 200-day uh, moving average, the grey line there around 74.25 yesterday at the low around uh, 73.33, basically testing the post-November support area for this market, so that kind of makes sense. And uh, I suppose if we are any lower than the 7300 zone, we'd be uh, getting the tin hats on or putting them on. In the meantime, we've got the RSI in the oversold area. It's bounced off the oversold area twice now, a sub RSI 30. The last time we had the RSI below 30, that was basically when the FTSE was around 6800 and uh, 6700 back in October. And you can see that if you look back, most of the times we've been down at this RSI level 30 or below has actually provided a buying opportunity. Normally, the 200-day line will be the support area on the way even uh, on the way down, even if it uh, only lasts on a temporary basis. Those are the charting rules or the technical rules. So, looking for an end-of-day close through 74.25. Uh, Above that, looking for then resistance on the way down around 76.40. That's probably the map at the moment. Below 7300, then we would be looking around to the 7080 area which was that initial November support, and also that was uh, the initial October resistance. But uh, obviously not a pretty picture, and obviously some in the market, uh, some bright sparks looking for 7,300 to break, and for us to go all the way back down to the 6,700 zone, which would be rather upsetting, I suppose. Moving on to the DAX, which has uh, actually been, uh, at least until yesterday, in a rather better place than the FTSE, so not quite as... Uh, negative we're still trying to hold that uptrend line there from the top of the channel or bottom of the channel there from back in october which you could argue that we still have in fact uh, that fits rather well and uh, the rsi not as oversold as the FTSE, so in the upper 30s uh, the last time we were at rsi 30 for the dax that was obviously a, a very juicy uh, buying opportunity there near 12,000, and also back in september there was a rebound from that area so Maybe if you are a, a fan of the DAX, fan of uh, going long, then you wait for the RSI to go a bit lower. Otherwise, we may have seen the worst, uh, barring uh, obviously an end of day close back below yesterday's low, 14,702. If we do break that, then the next level down towards 14,500. But at the moment, not seeing anything worse than that. But it has to be said, that uh, bull trap island top did work uh, wonders in terms of uh, flagging the... Uh, move down that we've had of uh, what sort of around uh, 800 points that sort of thing moving on to the dow which uh, has been the culprit i say it was exposed in terms of uh, dragging the other indices down although i suppose in the end it was uh, credit suisse which was the real uh, shocker we had support there we have support there from november around 31,700. below that then there's the risk of a move down towards uh, the initial october resistance around 30,500 but at the moment holding for now rsi near the 30 area we've already bounced off that uh, once might have to have a retest of the uh, rsi 30 area again uh, the easiest buy signal here probably would be an end of day close back above the 200 day moving average which in this case is around uh, 32,300 uh, interestingly enough that's still uh, well it's, it's basically gone flat after rising but uh, still holding flat rather than actually being a negative force the 50-day uh, line is falling, and that does pressure this market. In fact, the uh, current sell-off came from the failure at the 50-day line and the failure at RSI 50. Moving on to the um, Bit Bitcoin chart, which Bitcoin being an oasis of stability, uh, which is possibly not what most people would have expected. Uh, we had a bounce here off the 200-day moving average, a bounce off RSI 30, so the, the uh, Bitcoin showing you how uh, these bounces can occur and that's why we're looking for the, that kind of thing on uh, the indices current situation looks like a mid-move consolidation a bull flag and we're looking for uh, probably an end of day close now above 26,000 to take us up towards the uh, top of that rising trend channel from back in june as high as 32,000 and we maybe see that by the end of next month or hopefully rather sooner we've got the 50-day line rising we closed the gap down that we had at the beginning of March. That was another uh, positive. And just waiting now really for the 200-day uh, moving average to start rising to give us a, uh, an even better look for this market. So 32,000 looks reasonably uh, well um, in a sort of set for this market, especially while we remain above the 50-day line around the 23,000 level. 
that that would be decent. On to the uh, stocks, uh, the small cap stocks, and uh, obviously the cupboard rather bare, but um, I'm just going through some of the better performers of the recent past. Obviously, Celadon uh, not only broke uh, and uh, managed to break back above old support around the uh, uh, the uh, mid 80s, but then went up to test the uh, 20, 2022 resistance around one pound 66. But we had a, uh, an overshoot on the upside there towards uh, 175. 175 still the target for the shares, a retest of that zone, while we hold above around 130, which was resistance for the shares on the way down last April. So still potential for another spurt higher for Celadon. Moving on to uh, Conroy Gold, which uh, seems to be very popular uh, with the sale process going on. Obviously got some juicy assets there. Uh, here we've got a situation where the shares broke above the 200-day moving average around uh, 22 pence above that we're looking for as high as 36 pence by the end of next month. Obviously, that's a technical call not to do with any fundamental developments that may occur. One of the uh, more beaten down stocks of the recent past was uh, Caracal, and uh, looks like it is recovering. There were just the first signs that it was re recovering. We had a, a hammer candle there. We had bullish divergence, which actually has worked, which uh, shows the merits of uh, following that. We had a trend line break as well from December. That was around the 0.22 level, so anybody who entered around the low point twos would be relatively happy now initial resistance comes in at the 50-day moving average at 0.34 but we're really looking for 0.4 or so which would uh, be february and late january resistance for the shares upside value while we hold above neckline resistance around 0.27 if you can spare that kind of uh, percentage stop loss interestingly enough uh, even though the shares have come up already a long way in percentage terms the RSI has only just gone through uh, neutral 50, which is, suggests that this situation is only just getting going, and that 0.45 target at the January resistance line could actually be a viable one over the next four to six weeks. But the key here it is clearing the 50-day line and holding above it. Moving on to uh, another situation which is of interest at the moment, one of the few, Evgen Farmer. Here we've had a gap higher um, through uh, or a uh, outside a falling wedge which has been in place since november above the uh, top of the wedge there around 3.9 pence we're looking for a retest of five pence by the end of next month the only uh, stumbling block uh, is that we probably want to see an end if you're cautious and you're not already in it you want to see an end of day close above the 50 day moving average at four and a quarter pence before assuming that five pence plus could be on its way uh, stop loss here back below the 3.8 pence level and that uh, or at least that January resistance line. Moving on to a, one of the more obscure stocks uh, around, um, Couth. Uh, here we've had uh, uh, an unfilled gap to the upside after a sideways shuffle, as I call it, above the 200-day uh, moving average, in fact, above the 50-day line as well. View now is that um, while we're above the uh, old resistance on the way down, around uh, the £2 level, we're looking for as high as £2.80, which is what we were looking for. That was the guess. That resistance line there was the guess of the... Uh, a recovery trend channel and uh, so far that looks like it could be a good guess you can also see that that, that 280 area was the resistance on the way down this time last year just a couple of stocks to go now first one is uh, microlize and uh, here it was ac acquisition news earlier in the week unfilled gap to the upside the second one in a month which is very impressive and that suggests there'll be plenty of gas in the tank for the shares to head up to as high as £1.95 at that March or that one-year resistance line projection. Got the 50 and 200-day moving averages both rising as well, and that was a bear trap gap reversal th um, back in February or last month uh, from below the April um, support area, so that's another positive tick for Microlize. Upside certainly on the cards while we're above uh, the initial March resistance around £1.58 mid-price. Finishing off with uh, Valerix, which has uh, obviously had a rather rough ride over the last uh, year and a half. Um, probably too rough for most, but uh, here it looks as though we've got a bit of bottoming out going on. We had uh, one attempt at recovery at the end of last month. We've got another one going here with a higher low, which is um, a positive, and also we've got a bullish divergence line, which is probably for me the, uh, the main kicker. End of day close or end of day closes or end of week close above the 10 pence level should be enough to take the shares up to 13 pence and that December resistance line projection. If you're cautious, you wait for the RSI to break back above the neutral 50 level before taking the plunge. And these days, uh, everything seems to be like taking the plunge. 
That's it for me today. More updates tomorrow.